Welcome back to the Girl Power Alliance podcast. Um, I'm having a major fangirl moment because my guest today is like, people get really starstruck over celebrities. I'm very starstruck over Lana. I've been following her very faithfully and God has used her in my life for about six years. Let me tell you a little bit about my amazing guest today. Lana Vosser is first and foremost, a pursuer of the heart of, of God's heart. And secondly, a prophetic voice to the nations. Her desire is to help people develop deep intimacy with Jesus and activate their prophetic hearing to recognize God speaking in everyday life. Lana is driven by a vision to see people set free and walking in the abundant life that Jesus purchased for them. She is an itinerant preacher and prophetic revivalist who gets to participate in wonderful moves of God throughout the nations. She's married to Kevin. Uh, her and her husband and her two boys live in Adelaide, Australia, and I'm like, like nervous. Like I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you, Lana, for being here. Oh, it's such a joy. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about what God's going to do as we chat. It's going to be great. Me too. I'm very excited. And I want to, first and foremost, I want to talk about her book, The Prophetic Voice of God. Um, as I read, that, so let me, let me tell a little backstory. So I don't know, maybe, maybe six years ago, my mom would forward me your prophetic words via email and I would read them. And, um, this was probably a little early in my journey to be open to the prophetic. Um, not that I didn't believe it or anything, but I just don't think I was as open and, yeah. or just wasn't ready or something, but so much of what you would say or write in your emails would speak to me. So then I found you on Facebook and then like the whole world changed for me. And so, um, I just, for the last, at least two and a half years, at almost every word you've spoken, I felt like you literally were, it was only for me. <laughs> God's I'm like, she knew what I needed today. And so I know that that's not how the, I mean, obviously the Holy Spirit speaks to everybody, but that's, you have been such a, um, a voice of hope for me personally. And as I was reading and you're talking about all the people that you would pray, God, give me these insights, like Graham Cook and all these people. That's how I am with you. No. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, give me what Lana has. Come on, I'll, do, I'll do it. I'll do coffee every morning. Yeah. Give me what Lana has. <laughs> oh, that truly blesses me. God is amazing, isn't he? The way that he moves and the way he speaks, like, and what he does with our lives, with our yes. Like, it just, it still undoes me every day, truly. Well, isn't it a beautiful thing to know that God has used you probably for so many thousands of people that you'll, you'll never know until you get to heaven. I mean, you just have no, you didn't know me from anyone and, you know, Little did you know, you've been impacting me in such major ways in my walk with the Lord. God's amazing. Thank you. That's beautiful encouragement. <laughs> well, um, I was, as we were speaking before we started the recording, you know, this is just, I, I know that there's a lot of people that are very afraid because of the times that we're in, but mm -hmm. my spirit is, feels like wildly excited. I feel excited to be alive during this particular time in history and this mm -hmm. particular move that God is doing in the, in the nations and the globe and the universe. And so I feel it particularly important for, to continue to encourage people to seek the, the voice and the heart of God in ways like it's insatiable for me now, and I want to pass that hunger on to other people. So I thought we could speak about that. Oh, that would be fun. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. So yeah, I think that that's really important, especially right now and what God is doing in the earth and to be positioned. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm sure that you, I'm sure people send you everything that they see and they hear. And there's been a number of, I've had a number of people send me, you know, you know, prophetic words from people and they've been incredibly, um, discouraging and sad and scary. And I actually had the Lord tell me like, you, somebody sent me something the other day and he was like, don't even, you're not even to watch that. Yeah. 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 You got to be so careful what you, what you feast on. Like my personal conviction is like seven years, no, gosh, it's longer than that. 10 years ago. Now the Lord said to me, Lana, I don't want you to read any other prophetic words? And I was like, really? 
Wow. And he's like, because I don't want you to, I, I want to speak to you. And now I'm like, wow, I'm thankful because when I'm releasing a word, I'm not, you know, regurgitating somebody else's prophetic word that I've read. But at times the Lord will bring a prophetic word in front of my eyes that someone else has written. He'll say, okay, read this one. Or someone will send me something and he'll say, don't read that one. And so I think it's really important, you know, as, as believers that we are in that place of, okay, Holy Spirit, like, what are you saying? And then what do you actually want? want me to read like what am I to feast on because it's so important hey what we feast on and uh, what we fill ourselves with I mean it's I think it's everything and he has just been really impressing upon me the the power of words the words that we see like here in the United States I, I was in Australia a couple of years ago and so the news when I was there your news in Australia is much different than the news in the states the news in yeah. the states is it's it's just different. <laughs> and so people are so in the United States anyway, they're so inundated. It, it, they, it's like you cannot escape it almost. And so what they're constantly being fed through their eyes, through their ears, like subliminal, it's like in the background. And it's so, so, so important. It's almost, it's almost difficult to turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why as believers, we need to make sure that every day, you know, we are living in that place where our main feast table, you know, is Matthew 4, 4, you know, we're living by every word that he speaks, like every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Like that's the place where I, I fill myself up. So then if I'm bombarded and inundated with what media is saying or what people are saying, I'm not, um, it kind of bounces off that fortification of revelation that I've already been building in my, in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit every day. And that's the place where I'm living from. So I'm actually fed by that internal place of living water every day. Um, rather than kind of, yeah, being in that place where the news is saying, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. And, you know, doomsday and all of those things. Um, but we're like, no, I'm living from a higher reality. Like I'm actually living from my seat in Ephesians too. Like I'm not living on earth. I'm living by my seat. It's a, I mean, I think when I tell people that this is an exciting time, they look at me like I'm a, like I'm a loony bin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. I know that what it looks like with our eyes, but my spirit is just like, man, you know, you, you read the Bible and it's not stories to me. I, I, I kind of laugh when people say, you know, that character in the Bible or that story in the Bible, it's like, those were people, <laughs> they were characters. Yes. This was a real thing. Um, yeah. but I, I, you know, I read them and I think what it must have been like to be alive during these times, especially when Jesus was, you know, it, during his ministry and to watch things that he, what it must have been like. But of course, Jesus isn't here with us yet, but we're living in a time where people are going to say what it must have been like to live in that time. I believe that. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I think that, yes, like in this, this year that we look at, like I was, my husband and I were joking the other day, we were saying when my youngest grows up and goes to school and he has to do history and learn about 2020, <laughs> there's going to be a whole textbook, like really thick of what happened in 2020. But I think, yes, there's so much turbulence in the earth. There is, there's trauma, there's fear, you know, people are hurting, people are broken. And you know, I, I don't want to downplay that. I, I recognize it's a difficult place where we are in the earth right now. But again, not living in the natural realm, living by what the Lord is saying. I truly believe that this is the moment where God is preparing us to partner with him for the greatest move of the spirit of God that we have ever seen on the earth. You know, and, and we know Isaiah 60, it doesn't say, you know, when everything's great, arise and shine. It says, you know, when deep darkness covered the earth, you know, arise and shine for your glory has come. This is the moment I truly believe where God is forging and forming the true ecclesia. What does it mean to be the true ecclesia? What does it mean for me to be a daughter of the king living in times like we are right now? What does that even look like? And I just, I really feel like God's forging and forming us to truly partner with him to see like incredible uh, demonstrations of his power and I'll just say this I remember when COVID this whole thing started I was sitting with the Lord having a coffee and I said God what's on your heart today and he said to me listen past the noise Lana 
and I could hear all this noise in the atmosphere like fear and doubt and and trauma and I lent him closer and he said what can you hear and before I could even answer him he said to me can you hear the sound of reformation Mm. can you hear the sound of reformation and it was this beautiful invitation from the Lord in that moment that yes there's all this stuff going on in the earth but you and I And the body of Christ are being called into this beautiful place right now where we literally sit with the Lord and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you actually saying? There's all this chaos in the earth, but you're actually speaking that reformation is upon the church. You're speaking that awakening is upon us. You are speaking about the greatest move of the spirit of God in the earth. And so I think it's so important right now, like you said at the beginning of this, to be postured at the feet of Jesus and saying, God, what are you saying? Because this truly is a moment where we are being positioned and prepared for things that we've never, ever, ever seen or dreamt of before. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> I mean, you're right. I mean, here in California, it's, it's, people are terrified. I mean, it's a, there's a lot going on and it is real for people. They've lost jobs. Some you know, people have lost loved ones to, you know, sickness and, and a, just a variety of things. But I just... I, don't, I mean, I have moments, but for the most part, I just have this excitement and this joy. And the thing that the Lord keeps like p- putting in front of me and putting on my heart and putting on my mind day after day after day is the phrase revelation knowledge, revelation knowledge every day, like revelation knowledge. Like, and I'm just seeking, okay, God, ex- explain that to me more, like open that up to me more because I feel like this is a time where mysteries are being revealed in like rapid fire for people. Yes. Oh my goodness. You're you're so speaking my heart. Like this is the word. Like I have two words burning in my heart right now. One is about the cleansing and the purifying of the church. The other one is about the invitation into this place of accessing the revelation, knowledge and wisdom of God. Like, Yes, in scripture, it says in in James chapter one, you know, ask for for wisdom. And so that's always an invitation. But right now where we are in the body of Christ, there is such, I want to say it's like a, it's like the veil is so thin, like it's thinner than it's ever been. And I remember a couple of uh, months ago, I got up in the middle of the night, the Lord woke me, I couldn't get back to sleep. So I got out of bed. And as soon as my feet hit the ground, I felt like a waterfall had been opened out of heaven. I felt like in the natural, I was literally standing under a waterfall and I felt this like gush over me and I literally gasped and I said, oh my gosh, Lord, I just received an impartation. Mm. What did you, what did you give me, God? And he said to me, Lana, he said, I have um, given you an impartation of my heart for revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for this hour. He said, because I am revealing secrets of my heart that are so deep and that revelation of my word that is so, so deep that I am calling my people into this place where they will seek me. And he began to speak to me about prophetic solutionists rising in the earth and how the church is going to rise up with answers of wisdom and invention and strategy that the world has never seen before. Mm. And that'll be part of us, right? Like shining the love and light of Jesus and seeing, you know, nations transformed. But I, I want to say this, like I am, um, a few years ago, I had a dream and all night long, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Lana, I'm looking for those who will linger. Where are those who will linger? Where are those who will linger? And that undid me in that time because my greatest desire is I want to be a friend of God. Like that's my first and foremost. If I really truly am invited into this place of John 10, 27, where my sheep hear my voice and they know me, says the Lord, If I have that access, then I want to grab everything I can from that place. And so when that was happening in this dream, my heart began to cry out, God, like I will linger. I'll be one who will linger. And as I was waking, he said to those that linger, I will entrust the secrets of my heart. And, you know, and I've, and I feel like right now we are being invited into that place to linger. What does it look like? It can look like eight hours on your lounge room floor just sitting and delighting in his presence and listening to him. But it can also be while I'm chopping potatoes and carrots for dinner at night. Yes, I'm not physically sitting and lingering, but my heart is lingering. You know, my heart's in that place of God, what are you saying? What are you dreaming about? Lord, what are you speaking? And so, yeah, I truly believe in that posture right now. The, it is an unprecedented level 
of revelation God is releasing. And so not only do we need to posture ourselves to receive it, but also learn as well how to steward the yes. revelation that he's releasing. I, I have been feeling this because um, I've been in the business world, you know, not in ministry, yeah. although my business now is like both because everything I've ever done, even though it wasn't in ministry, was in ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you don't have to be in the church to be in ministry. And, right. um, you know, I feel like what, what the Lord is asking of me personally, he keeps talking to me about how desperately the body needs leaders, like real leaders to, to rise up unafraid. Well, that, let me rephrase that because you know, you don't, you can still do things and being afraid, but, yeah. but having the courage to do it anyway, having the courage to stand and be bold, having the courage to step out into places that are unknown and to, and to really like bathe people in the, 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 the teachings that they would need to be able to rise up as leaders. And I think in this world, you know, we're driven by analytics. How many mm -hmm. likes, how many follows, how many this and that and the other thing. But, yeah. but that's, it's irrelevant. And I think it turns people away from a call sometimes because they're like, I don't, who am I speaking to? But it's the one, the one is enough for so many people. So I really know that that is something just for me personally. And I know that if it's me, then there's gotta be a, a bunch of other people that are getting that, call and i i feel like it's it's like the generals are going to rise first mm. at, you know in this place of leadership and they're they're building armies for what's happening yeah and i think that's amazing you know like uh, when we crossed over at pentecost this year i was sitting with the lord and i said god what are you saying and he, he spoke a few things to me, but one thing he spoke to me that just so impacted me, he said, Lana, from Pentecost and beyond, I will release a supernatural courage and boldness upon my people uh, to do what I've called them to do and to build in the ways that I've called them to build and to speak out, you know, the, the truth of, of scripture and to speak the gospel and to not be afraid and to, to take a stand for the Lord. And I just, while you're speaking like that, just, it really resonates to me that in this hour that not only are we being called to really listen to the Lord and receive um, wisdom and divine instruction, God, how I'm not building for you, Lord, I'm building with you. So mm. how are you building and how can I partner with that? So as I'm sitting there in that place, okay, I'm hearing the instruction, then God, give me the courage to be able to stand and to build as you're building. And I truly believe in this hour that God is dismantling the places in the church where there has been the focus on how big is your platform? How many followers do you have? It's not about that. Mm -mm. Okay. Praise God that, you know, if, if God gives you a, a big platform, that's not for you. That's so you can bless more people. You can reach more people. But what I truly believe right now is that the Lord is raising up the church and saying, Hey, you have a voice. Like you are powerful. Like I am, I am living. My spirit is living inside of you. You have a message. I truly believe that muzzles are being removed in this hour. I believe that some of the, how can I say this? Some of the people we're going to see that are going to be key in this move of God that are going to be championing and leading. I'm not saying like leaders that amazing leaders that have already been going, aren't going to be part of, it. I'm not saying that, but what I do believe is that there are unexpected people that are going to arise in the earth that you may have never heard their name. You, you don't know, you've never heard of them, but they, but they're known in heaven. And they're known by the Father and they, they've truly been in that place of being a friend of God and ministering to the Lord. And we're going to see God use some of the most unexpected, unknown people but the, that have been so faithful to the Lord. And in their, their yes of obedience, there is going to be so much favor that is going to fall on their life. Uh, to, to build and to move in all that God has for them. And so I just, I want to say this as well quickly, like it's just, it's been burning on my heart for a few weeks and it's burning again. So I'm like, Lord, I just want to say this, like, I want to lift off you that, that if any of you that are listening are carrying that apology. Now, what do I mean by that? I saw in the spirit recently that there is an apology that is um, a ceiling over many of God's people. And it looks like this. Sorry, I don't, operate the same as you do. I'm sorry that my gifting looks different. I'm sorry that my expression is different. And, and they're living under this place of apology. And it comes from insecurity. It comes from people telling them, 
you know, what you're doing isn't right. That's not God or God doesn't move that way. I just want to lift that off you right now in the name of Jesus, because I just see that there is a flourishing that is happening in your life right now. And God is really bringing you to a place where he is um, concreting within you the anointing that you carry the gifting that you have and also the purity there are some of you listening that you've been doubting your heart oh my gosh maybe i'm not pure maybe my motives are wrong i just want to i just want to like shake it off you <laughs> because that's not that is not the father and i feel like in this hour that the lord is saying this is your moment for such a time as this to rise up with a confidence not an arrogance a confidence in what the lord has called you to um, who he is in you, the anointing on your life. And as you say yes and step forward, I just see the camels coming. There is such provision coming to you, people, resources, everything that you need. And you will begin to see that the plans of God for your life are just so much bigger than you can imagine. Um, try not to cry over that one. I'll cry afterwards. Um, <sighs> I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And one of the things that the Lord has told me within what I'm doing with the Girl Power Alliance is, um, and I keep saying it in, in all of my marketing when I do anything within the group, is that every voice matters. Every voice matters and every voice is needed. And so I think, unfortunately, a lot of times in uh, with women, I, I believe that the enemy knows how powerful women are when they rise up together. And so what he's done for centuries is created an environment of competition and comparison with women. And so I just want I just want to like break that off of women and create an environment that that spreads out beyond what I'm doing into the culture of the world where women really see like we were designed by God to uh to we have so much power when we're together. And like so much so much power. He you know, God gave us as women such unique gifts to be able to do so many things mm -hmm. at one time. I mean, yeah. it's like, I used to read Proverbs 31 and I would like curse God. I was like, that is rude. All these things you're asking of us. But then one day he like flipped a switch and he was like, no, no, no. This is what I've given you. This is your yeah. gifting as women that you, yeah. you as women have the ability to do so many things and to do them to my glory. Yeah, I just think that's that's beautiful. And I think right now in the earth that there is a move of God where women are arising, like, mm -hmm. you know, to know who they are in Christ, to know their identity and to walk boldly um, in their in their authority, in their in their calling. And I love what you said, you know, every voice is powerful because I know I'll never forget the day I was sitting with the Lord and he said, whether you are at home changing diapers, cooking dinner going to the cafe, no matter what you're doing. He said, you have a voice. You can, as you prophesy, as you pray, as you bless, as you write, as you create, whatever it is, like your voice is powerful. And what you carry is, is needed in the earth and is different to, it's a different sound to what somebody else carries. But if you're trying to muffle your sound and change it to look like somebody else, then you're not releasing what God has, has placed inside of you. And I, I just think that the, the wonder women of God are arising in this hour to mm -hmm. truly, to truly take that ground that the enemy has stolen and, um, and, to, and there's going to be a mighty move of God through women. I, I really agree. Believe. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And you, you were talking about lingering. And, you know, I think that we are told that we don't have time to linger. And I, I just know that chaos and distraction is what the enemy uses so prevalently in everybody's lives, men and women, young and old, to create an environment in their life where they just, they literally do not know how to make time. And if you're listening, I just want to encourage you. That is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lie uh, that there you have you do have time and it it is the most it, it is the most important time of of the day and i will say that in the season for me personally um i go to bed at night looking forward to my mornings with jesus like you know you're tired or whatever i'm like so excited to go to bed and wake up and, and just be, what are you going to say to me today? What, what is it that you have today for me? And it almost feels like a manna season. Like every day I get what I need that day. I want so much more. I'm like, just put out a feast, but he just gives me like that day. And I, you know, but I'm just yeah. like, I want more and more. And I believe that 
as you, if you're listening to this, as you just say yes to that, create the time that you will, he will create in you that same insatiable hunger for more of him. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you think about it, don't you? The more, like in the natural, the more you eat, the more full you get. And you're like, oh, okay, I can't eat anymore. My stomach's going to explode. Yet the more you encounter him, the more you hear his voice, the more you receive from him, the hungrier you are. Like it's, it's just, it's the kingdom. It's just such a beautiful thing. And, um, and I think you, you're exactly right. You know, the, the enemy has really been, you know, working hard to, to bring distraction against God's people and all of this stuff going on in the earth. And, you know, my life is busy too, you know, with the ministry, I've got children and, you know, how in the world God does this work, but you know what? Yeah. Some days I'm tired. Like I, I go to bed and I wake up in the morning. That's my delight that moment. And some mornings I'm like, Oh my gosh, Jesus, I'm so tired today, but I'm here because you know, like to me, fire falls on sacrifice and some yeah. days, it's a sacrifice. Some days when my alarm goes off, I'm like, oh, another hour in bed would be really good. But my spirit is burning and I can't wait to get into that place with the Lord. Um, so, you know, and other days I will lock myself in the bathroom and sit on the bathroom floor for 10 minutes while my kids are playing just so I can have a moment with the Lord. And so I think you're right. You know, it's just about looking in my day and going, okay, where can I grab these moments and where can I, I, I really just take time to make space and make room for God. Um, and that can look like those moments the morning and it can look like while you're chopping potatoes and cooking and whatever you're doing. Um, just lingering with him. He loves to, like, he just loves us to linger. Like he's so, what I'm overwhelmed with is how passionate the Lord is about um, sharing what is on his heart. He just, he loves sharing what is on his heart. But the thing that has really struck me is, you know, we have to be people that understand that uh, and not become complacent in the place where it is actually the king of glory that is speaking to me. It's not my husband, as much as I love my husband talking to me, it's not my next door neighbor. This is the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who gave his one and only son so that I could know him. That same God every day says, hey, Lana, do you want to come and sit with me so I can tell you what I'm dreaming about for the earth? Oh my gosh, can we never move from that place of awe and wonder that we get to hear the voice of the creator every day? It's um, sometimes when like, you know, I'm having my quiet time and I'm c having a conversation with him. I think to myself, you know, cause I want to ask like more, it, yeah. like you talked about it a lot in your book, you know what I mean? When he's telling you something, then, you know, ask him to reveal more. So I've been yeah. doing that. I've been following that. And so sometimes I almost feel like, you know, he's God, do I even have the right to ask for more? Because like, you know, I'm at like, tell me more. You just told me this, but tell me more. Like, you know, so I get that. It's this reverence. And when you, when you hear about, especially in some church settings, they use the, the verbiage all the time, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, but it's not this like cowering in the corner, fear of the Lord. It's not this thing that, that like when the enemy comes and he brings fear into your heart, it's not that type of a, it's a reverence of like to, to be in your presence is the, I don't ever feel worthy to, to get to be allowed to hear into these, into the, the heart of the creator of all. Yeah. And, you know, you just have to look in scripture. It says we, we know the scripture well, don't we? Like that, you know, the fear of the Lord is the, is the beginning of wisdom. And so that is the place that as you and I live daily in this place of awe and wonder, like, God, I'm sitting here in a moment in my prayer room with a coffee, talking to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Like, oh my gosh, like in that place, like that is the place that heart posture is the place where God says, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to share so much with you. I'm going to share my revelation with you. I'm going to share the deep secrets with you. The invitation is for all. He wants to speak to everyone. He wants to release it to everyone, but he cares about our hearts and our motives. Am I going to God so I can get the latest prophetic word and be the latest voice and get the most shares? Or am I going to God because I truly want to know him? 
Am I sitting before him? Because I truly want to know him. And, you know, so often I've said to the Lord, God, I feel like I'm this little kid that is like standing next to you, pulling on your robe, going, yeah. I know that you told me this, but I, I just want to know more. And I want to, I, I just want every drop. And for a long time, I used to go, oh my gosh, like, sorry, Lord, am I being irreverent? Like, uh, you know, I'm, oh God, I'm yeah. sorry. And the Lord said to me, do you know what? I love that, Lana. He said, because that's childlike wonder. He said, that's childlike faith. And I think of my kids, you know, they ask me every detail about everything all yeah. the time. Yeah. And they're not being irreverent. They're just hungry to know. They're hungry. And so I just, I love that as we go to the Lord with that childlike heart and that childlike hunger and say, God, I'm so hungry. You've just showed me this, but I'm, 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 I'm placing value on what you've told me. But is there anything else you can, you can share with me? Because I'm so hungry to know you. Those places, the Lord never turns a heart like that away. Well, and your mother, I'm a mother. I have three. And, yeah. you know, I, I think two, two of, well, basically they're almost all adults now. My, my youngest is uh, going to be 18. So the other two are way older. Um, yeah. But I think about when they, you know, how, how much I long to just, just be in the room with them. They don't have to be interacting with me, but as a mother, I just want to, I want to know every detail about them. I want to be a part of their life. I want them to ask me things like they're my advice and you know what I mean? My, uh, my wisdom, because I've been here longer than them. And so I, that my relationship with my children has been such a, like a peek into how, and you know, how much God must love us because we know that it's so much more than how, than our capability here on earth. And so it's just, it's like, it's awe inspiring. It's humbling. It's like beyond, there isn't a word even that I can come up with that reflects how unbelievably grateful I am yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah. And that like, and that's the, the beautiful place, isn't it? To remember that how much he longs, like we long to know him and we long to be in his presence. But to remember that he longs so much to be with us that he said, I'm going to give everything. I'm going to give my son into this earth, into the earth to die and completely like a horrific death so that not only can you have eternal life and I bridge that gap, that, that of sin, you know, that separated us, but also so that I can invite you into this place of intimacy. So I can invite you into this place. This, I can restore that place where you can know me. And, you know, I've been so undone lately by um, the thought that you and I are invited into this place to be able to minister to God. Like, let's think about that for a second. You know, here we are, we, we do things for the Lord, which is great. You know, we build with him and we're his hands and feet in the earth. But you and I are actually invited into that place where we can minister to the Lord himself. You know, it says in scripture that the sons of Zadok, they were invited into the place uh, to minister to the Lord. And it says that their linen was white and it had no wool upon it, which was it spoke of mixture, right? And so as we cultivate that heart of awe and wonder, that purity of heart before the Lord, the pure in heart shall see God. And we come into this place and we can minister to him with our worship, with our praise, with my life every day, everything that I do today, God, let it be a sweet smelling sacrifice to you. May it bring joy to you. Like what a mind blowing thought every day that I can minister to the Lord himself. Wow. Yeah. It is mind blowing is the only phrase that I can even come up with that even comes close. Cause it just seems so silly and small. It just seems silly and small to me that you could have that impact. And it's just a, it's an awe inspiring thing. Um, so you are, Maybe are you travel? Are you back traveling again? Are, are you guys freed up there in Australia? Are you back doing live events? Yeah. So no. So well, yes and no. So we can in Adelaide where I'm living. Um, we can do meetings, um, but all of the other, well, I think a lot of the other borders are closed. So we had a trip planned to Sydney. We were going for a month. Uh, and that got cancelled two weeks ago because we just can't. We're not allowed to go. So uh, yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah. I know that um, I, I'll have all of your information. If you're, if you're listening to this in the podcast, all of the information to connect with Lana will be in the show notes. Um, I'll have a link to her book, which you can get on Amazon, um, her website. And uh, same, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be right below this, this video. And uh, find her on Facebook. Find the real page. She gets, she gets fake nice. pages all the time. Um, and just, you know, I like to say stand under the pinata. So, like, you know, you have one person that hits the pinata, but we all get to eat the candy. So we get to, we get to stand under the pinata from you, like, all the time, Lana. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm so, like, I told you, I'm fangirling that I get to actually speak with you. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's been such a blessing just to be with you and to chat. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.